Hello, Matt Davis here with more homework quiz help. This one comes from section 8.1. In April 2020, during the early stages of the coronavirus shelter-in-place orders in California, a study was conducted in Santa Clara County that tested 3,324 residents for coronavirus antibodies. The test revealed that 51 of those tested had been infected with coronavirus. Determine a 90% confidence interval for the true proportion of Santa Clara residents who had been infected with the coronavirus at that time. Enter the margin of error from your calculations below and round your margin of error to four decimal places. All right, so we're going to actually begin by backing up to the previous question, which asked us to come up with a point estimate for the true proportion. And if you're trying to find a point estimate for the true proportion, then that point estimate would be the sample proportion p hat. So our point estimate for the population proportion would be p hat. And p hat is equal to x over n, where x is the number of successes in your sample, and n is the sample size. So before we get started on filling those in, though, we're going to make a couple changes in the interest of giving help rather than answers. So instead of a 90% interval, we're going to do an 80% interval. And instead of having 51 of those show that they had the antibodies and that they've been infected, we're going to make that 53. So let's start with that number. What is that? That's the number of people who had the trait we wanted. So whenever you have that in a success failure problem, that's the number of successes. And then right here, we have the number of people that were tested. So that would be our sample size n. So p hat would be 53 divided by 33.24. And if you go to the calculator and round that to four decimal places, which is the standard, you get 0 0.0159. All right, so now we move on to this question, which is to use this point estimate to determine a confidence interval. So if we go to our formula sheet and write down the formula for confidence intervals for proportions, we see it's p hat plus or minus z star times the square root of p hat times q hat over n. And speaking of p hat, p hat is, or sorry, speaking of q hat, Q hat is 1 minus P hat. So to get Q hat, we do 1 minus P hat. And in this case, that would be 0 0.9841. So in terms of our formula, we have the P hat right there. We have Q hat right here. We have our sample size N right up there. So the one piece that's missing in our formula is Z star. So we need to work on that piece, and then we can start filling in the formula. So let's go ahead and do that down here below. A little bit of quick scratch work. So we draw a bell-shaped curve. We put the area in the middle, which we've changed to 80%. So that would be a 0.80 in decimal form. That leaves 20% left over, or 0.2. And we need to split that 0.2 among the two sides. So each side would get 0.10. Sometimes people forget to do that divide by two step. Make sure you remember to do that. And then this boundary right here would be Z star. So even though that's what the value we want, right? That's that Z star we're looking for. We're going to go ahead and start out by finding this Z on the left-hand side right here, which will be the negative one. And we do that just because it works a little bit better with the inverse normal. When you're doing a z-score for these, you want to do the inverse normal function, and you want to put the area to the left, and we have the area to the left written down for the negative z. It's 0 0.10. So let's go to the calculator, see what we get for that. So on the calculator, we want to go to the distribution menu. We want to choose inverse normal. We want to put that area to the left in, press enter. So we get negative 1.281, but following the 1 is a 5, so we'd round up and go negative 1.282, remembering to always put exactly three decimal places on z-scores. So that's negative 1.82, so that means that this one is positive 1.282. And so now we have the final piece for our formula sheet, and we can jump in and start working. So this was all just scratch work, and now let's head up here and start filling in the pieces. So p hat was 0 0.0159, 
and then plus or minus the z-score we just found, 1.282 times the square root of p hat, 0 0.0159 times q hat, 0 0.9841 divided by our sample size, which is 3324. So that's going to be 0 0.0159 plus or minus some amount. Let's go see what that amount is on the calculator. So we're going to start off with our z-score 1.282 times the square root, so second square root. And then we want to make sure we get all three of those numbers in the square root before we press enter. So first the p-hat times q-hat, and then divided by our sample size, 3324 and then close the parentheses after we have all three of those numbers inside of the square root. And then we want to round that to match the number of decimal places we put on our point estimate. We put four decimals on our point estimate, so we'll put four decimal places on this margin of error number as well. So 0 0.0027, except for the sevens followed by an eight, so we'll round up 0 0.0028. So plus or minus 0 0.0028. Oops, 0028. And then doing the subtraction and addition will get us our confidence interval. So P is somewhere between, if we subtract, we get 0 0.0131. So that subtraction is this number minus that number. So that's how we're getting the first one. And then if you do the addition instead of the subtraction, you get 0 0.0187. And that would be your confidence interval. And that was kind of the directions, was to find the confidence interval. That's the big picture question. But then if we look at what they asked us to, to enter into the active learning, it said just to enter the margin of error. So which part is the margin of error? The plus or minus piece right here is the margin of error. So that's what we would want to box and put into active learning. Not the plus or minus portion of that, but just the number. So 0 0.0028 is what you'd want to put into active learning. I would encourage you to always start off writing the formula sheet or the formula down from the formula sheet like I did here. Make sure that you are matching decimals on your margin of error with your point estimate. And then just make sure you're paying careful attention to the directions. So they didn't want us to enter the left or right boundary, but this time they want us to enter the margin of error and they kind of mix it up between those three different things. So. This time they wanted the margin of error. If they had asked for the left boundary, I would have entered that number. If they asked for the right boundary, I would have entered that number. So just pay attention to what they're asking for. The other thing I would encourage you to do is when you draw this picture, add those three numbers together to make sure you get a total of one. That makes sure you remember to divide the leftovers in half. It also makes sure that you got decimal places in the right spot. So just a quick addition of those to make sure that you don't have kind of a decimal place error or that you forgot a step. All right, hopefully that helps you with this problem. Wherever you were stumbling, you should have found the, the help there somewhere. Good luck to you as you head back to the original question.